Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom. In this video we're going to jump into Photoshop and a camera raw to go through and make this edit to the photograph we have in front of us. Now this is what I would call a nice retro warm summer glow. What we've gone through, we've tweaked the blacks, we've te this, tweaked the skin tones, we've adjusted quite a few different things on there and I've saved that out as both a Photoshop preset and a Lightroom preset you can get those in the description below so you can go and grab those and get yourself to this point. But as always, stick around because I'm going to go through some additional steps to make sure you get the most from the image that you're working on and not just using the presets a one click try to do everything effect. So let's jump into Adobe Camera Raw and take a look at how we can recreate this effect from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back and reset the image so we can see exactly what the starting point was. So I'm just going to come up to the top right hand corner and I'm just going to come down and say reset camera raw defaults. That'll put it back to the starting point. Now this is already a nice looking image but it really does make it look so much better when we go through all the settings we're going to cover in this video. So let's start off with the first panel. We're going to go through the basics. I'm going to set up some of the different options in there and then we'll carry on through the different modules and tweak each one to get the end result. Okay, so I'm going to leave the white balance as it is in the shot because in all honesty the white balance is fine in there. The exposure and the contrast again are both great. What we're going to start working with though is the highlight shadows, whites, blacks and clarity and so on. So for this I want to flatten those whites down a little bit. So I'm going to drag the highlights, we're going to bring those over to a negative, about negative 10, negative 15, somewhere in that kind of ballpark. That's going to get us where we want. Shadows are fine for this, we'll deal with the tone curve to adjust those in a moment. The whites, we're going to give those a little bit of a bump up just to sort of get some nice strong whites in what she's wearing. So again, let's take that to about plus 20, somewhere in that region. Really starts to make the whites pop in the picture. Again, we're going to leave the blacks as they are because we're going to make those alterations in the tone curve. The clarity, we're going to take that and we're going to drop that down to give it that slightly soft glow. So we're going to bring that down about minus 40, minus 50, somewhere in that kind of region for this image. That's looking pretty good. Now what that does is it softens it so it looks like we're looking through a nice soft filter, so it gives it a nice romantic feel, but it also makes the skin tone look so much better. It looks so much smoother, and we're not gonna go in and make adjustments to make it look fake. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the vibrance, we're going to give that a bit of a pop because I want the warmer colours in this to really pop out and we're going to pull the saturation back to let the cooler colours just fade away into the background a little. So let's grab the vibrance, let's bump that up to about plus 35, somewhere around there. That's looking pretty good. Like I say, it looks a bit strong at the moment but we've got that nice warm sunlight and we're going to bring the saturation and drag that back down to about minus 20, somewhere around there. That gives it that nice retro feel while still retaining the nice warmth in the skin tones. So that's the basics panel covered. We're now going to move on to the next option. We start to deal with the tone curve and we can adjust the sort of crushing blacks and the whites and so on. So we've now moved into the point curve mode. So we're going to start to deal with the tone curve. If you don't see this, make sure you've got the point as the selected tab, not the parametric. This allows us to directly influence the tone curve we can put points on there, we can adjust it quite easily. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a pretty simple S-curve, but we're going to crush the blacks as well. So let's add a couple of points in there, just to give us the ability to make those adjustments. What we're going to do is we're going to bump the whites up a little bit. That's going to sort of, over or sort of overpower those whites ever so slightly. We've pulled them back using the basics panel, so we're not losing anything in there. We've got a nice contrast. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the bottom left hand corner which is where the black information is in the image, the darkest parts, and we're going to bring those up and we're going to make those dark grey as opposed to black. If you look at, look at the hair, you'll start to see as we bring that up, we start to get more of a dark grey black in there as opposed to a solid black. So this is before, we've got nice sharp strong contrast in there, bring that up, we now start to get that nice retro kind of effect. I'm going to take the mid grey and just drop that down ever so slightly, just a little bit of tweak and we're going to come to the centre point and give that just an ever so slight bump and that's looking pretty cool, I like that. So that's the tone curve done, so we've now gone in and we've given it that nice retro kind of feel. 
So now that we've finished with the tone curve, we can now jump over and start to deal with the colors in the image. So let's just jump over to the HSL and Grayscale tab. Now, this is obviously something that's dependent upon the image that you're working with. So some of these alterations are ne not necessarily going to work the best if you're using an image that doesn't have the skin that's evident like this. So use this as an example to understand what's going on and tweak it according to the image that you're working with. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave all of the hue, all of those things are fine. We're going to come over to the saturation side of things. And what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate some of the sort of warmer colors in there for the skin tones. And I'll show you why we do that in a moment. So let's grab the reds. Let's drop that down to about minus 40. You should see the skin starts to dull down a little bit now. We're going to do the same with the oranges. We're going to take those down to about minus 17, minus 20, somewhere in there. So we now get that slightly desaturated skin tone. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the luminance section and we're now going to take those tones and we're going to make her look like she's got darker skin. So we're going to give her more of a suntan. And to do that, we're just going to use the luminance sliders. Again, we're going to concentrate on the reds and oranges to start off with and a little tweak in the yellow. So let's grab the red and keep, keep a notice on the skin tones in the face and in the legs as we start to take this down. And we start to get down quite low, but minus 60, somewhere around there, 60, 65. And we do the same then with the oranges, start to bring those down. You see the skin tone start to change. So we're going to do the same now with the yellows. We're going to bump those up a little bit, about plus 25. And we start now to get much warmer, browner skin tone. So we now look like the, the model has a lot more of a suntan than she did originally. So that's a nice way that if you've got someone that's a little paler and you want to give them a little more color, or alternatively you want to do the opposite, you've got someone that's got quite a strong suntan and you want to reduce that down to make them paler, you can use these to quickly and easily do that through using the luminance section through the skin tone colors, which are the reds, oranges, and yellows. So just keep that in mind if you want to adjust those things in the future. So that's the color alterations you want to do. As, as always, you could go through and tweak this a bit more if you wanted to, but we'll say I'm happy with that. So I've got one more final thing I want to do before I wrap up the preset that we're working with. And that's I want to go through and I want to apply some split toning to the image. So I'm just going to jump over to the split toning section. And this is going to, going to allow us to influence the tones in the shadows and the highlights and the balance between those two different color areas. So what we're going to do to start off with is I want to make the highlights just a little cooler. So we're going to drag those up to the sort of the blue areas. So I'm going to go to the mid blue point. And we're going to take the saturation and we're going to give that just a little tweak. Nothing much, probably about 10 or 12, maybe even a little lower than that. And you'll see that that starts to bring in some blue into the highlights. So if I take that right the way up, you'll see the white of the blouse that she's wearing starts to get more blue. So we take away, so all those highlight areas are starting to get blue in there. Now, like I say, that's a little too far. So I'm going to pull that back to around about, around about that point. That's looking pretty good. We can leave the balance for now. We'll adjust that in a moment. So the next thing I want to do is I want to warm the shadows up. So we've cooled the highlights and I'm going to warm the shadows. So we're going to take those up into the sort of orangey red kind of area, somewhere around that point. And then we're going to bring the saturation up on that again. I'm going to go crazy, but you'll see as I start to tweak this, the overall temperature of the image starts to increase and gets that much warmer kind of Mediterranean feel really starts to accentuate the skin tones as well in the model. Now it's a little bit too much for me at the moment, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the balance to control how much of the highlights is mixed with how much of the shadows. So for this example, I wanna push more towards the sort of cooler highlight area, so I'm gonna drop that down to about minus 10, minus 15, somewhere around that kind of region. And that gives us that lovely balance between the highlight coolness and the shadow warmth. So there we go, that's where the preset will get you to. And I think it's a really nice effect compared to the original image, which is already good, but this gives it that nice sort of summer retro warm glow. Really cool effect, the kind of thing that's big on Instagram and stuff like that. Now what I would do is I would go into this image afterwards and if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that when we look at the face of the model, there's some blemishes and things on there that I would want to address. So you could go in and do that. And obviously, once you've done this, you can click on Open Image. But we've done everything we want to cover in this particular video tutorial. So as always, if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, the technique, and anything else we've covered in it, please pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you want the free preset for either Lightroom or Photoshop or both, the link is in the description below. You can jump over to our website and download this completely free.
And until next time, take care.